This is Hi. March 5th, 2018. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, discovery uh, encounter. Oh. We felt a mandate to ask where is New Earth? We've done a lot of exploration, <clears throat> seeing a lot of people talking about engaging the current now and uh, really b saw the urgency of understanding if it's beyond our conscious mind. There's some talking about it just being in the conscious uh, mind <clears throat> and uh, how it links with the other things we've seen of how so many characteristics seem to change of what is new earth compared to old earth. Um, so how, <clears throat> how do the rules apply, which seems to uh, lead to where is it and, and what, what is the sort of um, agenda we can expect? <clears throat> We've seen when we've asked these massive questions has been amazing revelation, even though they're huge. And we've often gone beyond our, the depth of our um, understanding, but the revelation has, has come when we've gone in as a bench. We did see that um, the, we went in a few weeks back and saw and asked around the end times and we saw that the fire reference in scriptures was not necessarily a, a um, physical destruction of the old earth um, but a lot more around the consuming fire of God's love uh, which was very interesting as well um, so Anyway, let's just, um, I'll hand over to you, Lee, and we'll just go in and ask and set our hearts on, on where, where is New Earth? And I, I do suspect this will actually go beyond this question today um, into some other revelation we need of this feeling. So um, if, we, if we don't get anywhere with this question today, <clears throat> I don't see it's that uh, important important that we get that definitive answer because it's such a big question and it may need many stages to for uh, to be revealed to us for us to get to that point <clears throat> but i think we're just starting the journey over to you lee thanks okay so let's all um come together and open up our gates shut out all other realms as we enter through the blood of Jesus, as we put our body under our soul, our soul under our spirit, and our spirit under Holy Spirit as we enter in. Just... Um, Wondering whether we just go by what we see, more so than meeting at a designated place. Anybody feeling or having any thoughts regarding that? Would you mind saying that again, Lee, please? Could you just mute whoever's got a background noise? I was just um, asking whether we have anyone has anywhere they feel that they would like to meet or whether we just, as I say, go with the flow. Yeah, yeah I feel go with the flow, really. Yeah, I'm with that. Yeah, I agree. Let's just flow. Because this isn't so much about discovering a particular place, but just asking a very big picture question.
I really sense we <clears throat> to invite our many more at Linhin to help us with this. Who who do we have for this bench? Did we ever discover anyone who came regularly? Enoch? Was it Enoch? When you said that, Jen, I heard Daniel. Oh. Oh, that's right. We, I think we did have Noah, didn't we, Lee, when we met last time as well? Oh, yes, yeah. and Joan of Arc. Oh, yeah. Well, shall we just invite all of those four and anyone else, if you see anyone else? Okay, so that's... Sorry, oh, sorry Jan. Yeah, you go. <laughs> okay, so we just honour Noah, Enoch, Daniel and Joan of Arc to come and bench with us. Please share whatever you're seeing, sensing, feeling. I just had a question. I just wondered um, if, as we did um, in another ascension with uh, yesterday with Paul and um, Abraham, just had the thought if we should um, partake of um, their wine together. I've got a blank so far here on my end. Can you say that again, Bill? I'm getting nothing at this point. Oh, okay. I'm I'm seeing them make a make a four points. I'm seeing Daniel in front of us, and Enoch behind us, and John the Ark, and then uh, Noah at each side making a four points, but we in the center. Hmm. Yeah, that came to me that there were four with a window. Yeah. Yes. I had mm. the same thought about the window. Yeah. I think this is a really critical window, this. Maybe we need to step through this window. Had the same I thought. See, I see we are already inside and they are 
they are around us in four points. Mm. So what do we see inside that? Let's just, for any of you not there, let's just get ourselves positioned inside there. I saw the continent of Africa and the thought that's in my mind now that I realize it has been that of um, our great explorers of the past like David Livingston and people like that uh, many of whom did their exploration in Africa, and Africa at the time was called the Dark Continent um, because nobody knew what was there. It was hidden, a hidden mystery in, in a darkness, in the sense of hidden mystery is coming to mind. I have a question. Is the new earth going to be one landmass, which it is thought that it was at one time, the earth was one landmass? Yeah, we did actually um, engage that question in one encounter a while back. And we were talking about the rivers combining into one and we saw that the original landmass that it was all one at any rate and the separation had only occurred after creation. Um, so we saw that the original intention was to, for it to go back, yes. Oh, oh good, okay, thank you. Yeah, because we were asking the question about what the verses that says there's no sea and what does that mean? And, that, and we saw that was one aspect of the, yeah, the combined land mass. You see, it's just, we're seeing so many massive changes. Um, how does the earth ever get to these massive changes with mankind being on it? <clears throat> Yes, I was just um, sitting here thinking about these particular four men in white linen, Noah, the Ark, Joan of Ark, with armies, always armies, big picture. Enoch, out of space and time, Daniel, the mysteries, being revealed. Oh, you've just said something, Lee, there that sparked with me about time, out of time. Whether this gets to the point of happening as the earth comes out of a timeline. What I've seen to date is there's a, there's, a, there's a perfect blueprint timeline and there's a timeline that the Earth's on currently and the future's unknown according to the decisions that man make. Um, so it can verge towards the perfect blueprint timeline or it can verge away from it. And I see God's perfect um, will is for that earth timeline to ver to converge with the perfect blueprint timeline that's as far as i've got but where can we bring the was was into the into the 2b and bring it into the now by that process bring the earth into that full uh, convergence I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a governmental act, yes. Um, but whether that's for today or not, or whether 
whether we need to do that to get revelation or both. But I still think we should we shouldn't lose track of the question. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we can do that quickly. My question is um, when when the sons of God manifest, the earth supposed to we supposed to enter the earth groaning, right? I, I I am thinking that when that happens, that is when the the earth changes. I mean, goes out and the new earth comes in. I because agree. The whole, earth will, the whole earth is waiting for us to manifest, and when we manifest, the frequency will change, and the frequency of earth will have to adopt the, the new frequency, therefore change in accordance to the new earth. Because we are already living in the new earth, in this earth. I think that what we as manifest sons do in the new earth will manifest into the earth. I mean, I can see ra rapid acceleration in, in the, the systems and the things that we have. Um, to bring more of a perfection environment. Um, I, I don't see uh, that being difficult to get your head around. What I, I really find hard is when you think about the physical aspects of, you know, does it really mean when there's no sun? That, that, does it really mean there is no sun? Um, or does that just really mean God's glory is gr great? is so great that that transmits around and because the implications of anything changing physically are huge. Mm. Unless what you're saying patience is the frequency changes the laws of physics so massively that the same laws don't apply. Because I'm just thinking back to this time thing when if you come out of time, the, same, the laws of physics don't apply. Do they? We can do stuff in the spirit we can't do in the natural. Yes. And, and even when Adam, Adam disobeyed, he dropped from the spirit realm into this time world, time earth. Yes, you know, just like that. The same way when we get into the fullness of the sonship, we can just drop here with a new frequency and change it. Hmm. Jane, part of the um, sun question, I think, comes back to let there be light. And I think that that let there be light is the light of New Jerusalem in, uh, well, the city of light in the new earth. Um, so at the very least, the primary light source is not going to be the sun any longer. It's going to go back to original intent. It's going back to let there be light being the primary light source. It also says there won't be any night. Yeah. And that's going to be that, I probably won't speak it correctly, but that's going to be that creative light, created light, um, Thing with the sun being the one, the created light, and the uh, the light of the city of light being the creative light, the let there be light that originally was spoken, which we've already spoken into New Earth. So that was the first light. Yeah. It, the first light, the let there be light, I believe, is the light of Jesus. It's, it's uh, the light of the, in, in John for chapter 1, where it says, in the beginning was the word, and so on. And then it says that uh, in him was life, and that life was the light of the world. life that is light of the world of Jesus and we know that everything having to do with heavenly cities is, is having to do with Jesus <clears throat> was the original light 
I've just realized going back to this is it out of time it must be out of time and if it's out of time then none of these things that we see on the earth now uh, matter so so how do I say it? Because the heavenly realms and the earth realms are combined, new laws operate such that um, we can't think of it as as the, as a, an earth as it is currently with the sun and um, and that is why there can be no it, it, no night. Because everything op must operate so differently. And that previous thing of that fire has burned up all the works of man. The only thing remaining is the kingdom. Mm. Everything else is shaken, right? Or burned up? Yes. The only thing left is kingdom. And we discern in the last day or two that when we enter New Jerusalem, we actually are entering the kingdom. And so the only thing that remains is these heavenly cities. When you look at New Jerusalem, you're seeing the kingdom of God. And there's these 12 heavenly cities that one after another we're going to enter into. And these 12 heavenly cities is all that remains of the works of man and the earth. Everything else is burned up because it's been built out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But they'd still be physical. It'd be but physical, I would think, but it's still, yeah. Physical but spiritual in meaning like they can transform. Physically. Yeah. Yeah. There's something material here too, Jane, because we know that the um, New Jerusalem landed on the earth. You and I felt it that day. And then Patience and I, and we that happened in an encounter. And Patience and I were in a second encounter where New Jerusalem landed on top of Old Jerusalem. So there is some connection between the old and the new. And the old still counts for something. It's probably like old wineskin and new wineskin. You come out of the old into the new. Maybe we're not trying to fix up old earth. We're actually migrating from old earth to new earth. Yeah. That's it right there. I tend yes. to think that way. Possess the land, right? You possess the kingdom. You enter into the kingdom and you take possession of it. We're going to enter into the new earth, leaving the old earth behind. So, Jane, the answer to the question is the question doesn't make any difference. It, it's uh, There's no value in it about this old earth. The old earth counts for nothing. We're moving into the new earth. It's like um, going up into this attic and pulling up the attic stairs behind you and you, <laughs> you leave the ground floor behind. Yeah. Is this also a okay. new thing? Can you perceive it? Say your, say your question again. I am doing a new thing. Can, can you perceive it? Yeah. 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 Behold, I am making all things new. After he, uh, be, after they saw the new heaven and the new earth in Revelation 30, 21, behold, I make all things new. So put your eyes on the new. Behold, <clears throat> look at it. Look away from the old, look to the new. Yeah, There's a new maybe, heaven and a new earth. And maybe this is why we're being led to such an emphasis around the cities mm -hmm. that have to feel that we embrace them, we um, enter, inherit, and possess them.
because they are our inheritance and yeah. they matter. It's not just for governing over the problems of the earth today. It's back they to not fixing the old mountain, Jane. Yeah. Yeah, they're, so they're our inheritance. I'm seeing this a lot clearer now. This is wonderful. So they're our inheritance of elements of the new earth. They're not just, just yeah, for today's governing problems. Yeah. Oh. Can someone enlighten me on what these 12 cities are? Um, it's New Jerusalem, which you've already entered, the city of truth. And it's the city of Zion, which you've already entered, where you became one with Jesus in, as life. I am the life. And then it's city everlasting, which you've already entered, where you became beginning of fathering as an everlasting father. I'm sorry, uh, everlasting city is, is the third one, which you've already entered. That happened two weeks ago, and we've been talking about it for two weeks now. You've already entered that and become uh, united with Jesus in everlasting life i am everlasting life i am everlasting father and then today i realize that also i am everlasting love is in there too because at this point we've become perfected in love and the fourth heavenly city is the city of light which is the city on a hill in the new earth and um yeah, Jane, uh, everything on the old earth has burned, been burned up. And we're migrating, we're moving. We're doing this, um, colony, uh, this, this space colony thing that we've been talking about all these many years that actually has some truth behind it. We're colonizing the new heaven and the new earth. You know, it kind of reminds me of... Um uh, Dr. O's message. I don't know if you remember some time ago, Jane, we were talking with that we were dialoguing about that the uh, Anakian preparation for the newer generation. Oh. And just in a nutshell, who was talking about it's kind of it's so long ago, I listened to that, but um, that. We're going to need some kind of technology to help people that couldn't do it in the spirit leave the earth and go to somewhere else. Jane, that's what we were dialoguing about what, um, on the Echinopian generation. Ah. Well, I, and, I'm, and the reason why I'm saying that is just because this conversation we had is very is similar to some dialogue he was talking about in that video. I yes. haven't seen that, but it would be simply Enoch walked with God and then he was not. He picked up and left the old and walked into the new. Full body, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, full body. Yeah. And... Um, and I remember Dr. O saying, he said, you can even see the billionaires are um, planning and preparing to leave the earth, which I thought was really interesting. He also said, there's going to be a dispensation of people who will live for a thousand years. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that a reference to not just their age, but to the thousand year millennium? And he spoke about the technologies happening now. Uh, he yeah. said that the problem will be creating beings mixed with other genetic structures. Yeah. How do you maintain the genetic grace of humanity and not compromise it with the genetic serpent system? Yeah, it was really, in yeah, it, yeah, it was really interesting. He says that whenever man gets to a place where they're about to self-destruct, got to raise up an Enoch archetype people to save mankind. Hmm. And that's what, the, that's what the sons are going to be called to 
in this hour. I'm paraphrasing big time, but that was one thing he said. Mm. Mm. Yeah. About that how sounds like the sons. That sounds like that sounds like the people of the first resurrection. The harvesters of the harvest mm -hmm. who train the people that are left how to become sons. Yeah, I mean, the revelation we've had today, um, when Lee and I have been doing quite a bit um, recently, is uh, we've been seeing we can actually enter in Eden, uh, which uh, is a was sort of like the original blueprint, and in that and that sense, um, we see that's where it, if we choose to if we've gone through the the immortality process and accepted that if we choose we still don't want to be on our body on the earth we can choose to go into eden and almost disappear and so we live out of that environment and then i'm seeing that the the eden and the new earth combine at the final blueprint but what's confusing is we've got the timeline that each of us is on right now and the choices that we can make, but then we've also, we're talking about the corporate timeline. So we mm. have to be clear what we're talking about, whether we're just talking about what individuals can do right now or what, what is the final blueprint for everybody. Mm. That's mm. where it gets a bit confusing. Yeah. Sometimes we're talking about different scenarios. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This scripture in uh, Isaiah 51, 6 is coming to me. It says, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke and the earth shall wax away like old garments. Hmm. Wow, that is good verse. Yeah. How do you find these patients? <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Is that what? Is that 55? Isaiah 51 verse 6. Simone, can you paste it for us so sure. everybody can see? Uh, uh, what's the chapter again? Isaiah 51 verse 6. 51. Okay. Isaiah 51 6. My point is, that means that they will just vanish away at a point in time. Yeah. Yes. I could see that. Yes, yeah, so there won't be this huge sort of, you know, kind of uh, physical um, traumas going on. Yes. It, it will just be a... Well, I almost see it like it, it, the old earth will, will just kind of go out of time. Mm -hmm. thing will happen so it's no longer in physical time because the whole death time comes from but from death and when we've all el eliminated that as a consequence and submitted to the full government of god and the death is no longer an issue and so we're out of time at that point we're only conscious of time now because we've chosen self-government. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the main thing is time and space because um, it also says that there will be no night in the new earth. You see, a time is time which brings about night because we, we get to know it's night because of time. Time is what we use to measure nights. So if there's no night, then there's no time. Yes. Yeah. It's obvious now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's obvious, yeah. It's yeah. not flat light throughout. So don't, no night, no day, even no space. We, I mean, I think this is something our mind can wrap around it, but it's going to happen. Yes, because really the new earth will become Metatron's cube. Mm. Because it will combine every realm and dimension. Yes, yeah, so it, it will not be a, a, what do we call this, a 3D environment. 
I heard Ian describe it as um, time is going to be rolled up and done away with. Mm. Yes. I heard him describe it like that. Yeah. You can almost see it that like a scroll just just jumping up in the, you know how your scroll is always um, wrapped up unless you push it down. I can almost just see like that the whole thing just yes rolled up, up into like a roll. rolled up like yeah. a carpet you roll the carpet up yeah old garments and put away <laughs> just like the old one skin so so in that in that sense the the ages will be rolled up in that as well i would think yes well, I think that's when you everything will become the age of light. Mm. The age of Zion will be wrapped up into the age of light and it will just be one age which everyone will be able to particip will participate in. There'll be no choice and difference. And... So what, what about the rest of that um, verse? For the heavens will vanish away like smoke, the earth will grow old like a garment, and those who dwell in it will die in like manner, but my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will not be abolished. Uh, in like manner would be grow old like a garment. Mm -hmm. So those that are still subject to death will die. We're not talking about destruction or uh, judgment in any way. We're just talking about those that are actually living on the earth will die out. There won't be anybody left because everybody's either died or moved on because they don't die. Mm -hmm. It'll be empty. And even the, the next line helps us. It says, my salvation will be forever. And his salvation is for everybody. Yeah, it's not saying that people get left out. It's just saying that they either die or don't. Is dying also separation? Yeah. Uh, separation only right. from only from living, though, in that sense. Uh -huh. um, living on the earth. And then it'll be irrelevant. It's old and... That would be those that um, I would think resist and reject the truth yeah it sounds like uh it will be um only the righteous and only humans only the children of god only that become sons only humans I think that word dwell is important, though, too. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but in, in Revelation and John's writings, dwell has to do with abiding, mental, um, remaining, uh, dwelling. Uh, in other words, being in union with Jesus. But it seems to me it would also include uh, the person that decides they do want to die, the believer that decides they, they don't want immortality. They do choose to die. They would live here until they die and then after a while it's like the lights go out and no one's at home here in the old earth because hmm. either died or moved away i'm gonna come from another direction for a second this keeps coming to me so i'm just going to say it um you know in the new earth there won't be a sea Right. And what's um, coming to my mind is how the, the waves and the current are uh, in this old earth, you know, and earth now is controlled by the moon, you know, the current and all that. I mean, it impacts it, um, which is an impact of time as well. So in the new earth, because there won't be a sea, because there won't be an ocean, 
there, you know, there's, there won't be a moon, there won't be a sun. Um, I don't know, that just came to me, I just... I think you've got a key there, though, Simone, because there's no time, there's no rotation. And right. day and night comes from rotation with relationship to the sun, and tides and such come because of rotation having to do with relationship to the moon. Mm -hmm. So if there's no time in these things that create and are part of the system of time, I'm, um, you know, the question is just coming, um, since we know time will be rolled up and put away, um, does that include the sun and the moon and like manner things? Um, so that's just the thought that's coming to me. Or I, I'm just holding and meditating, you know, our initial question, where will new, the new earth be? Well, here's the other thing too, Simone. Uh, the, they were created for signs, right? Right. There's no need of signs any longer because the mysteries are all revealed. Right. And boy, will we be beyond the veil and then some. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and we'll be for that. yeah. Man, that's a big wow. And, and I, I'm just saying, really, where, where New Earth is, is it's a dimension in Metatron's cube. Mm -hmm. or, or a realm, a realm, I should say. Um. That and that's what it is. It's or or we just or we describe it as the whole of Metatron's cube. Probably probably the latter actually. And Jay, here's another thing. First uh, Corinthians fifteen speaks about there being a heavenly body, a earthly body, and a heavenly body. <laughs> I wonder if the body that we have in the new earth is not the same. Body, it's a body, but it's not an earthly body, it's a heavenly body. Well, I see. Well, to date, I've always saw it that we go back to the original plan, which was a, um, a physical body, but with the spirit on the outside, so it's able to act like a spiritual body mm -hmm. primarily, not dominated by the physical um, characteristics of the body. But look um, at First Corinthians 15. It speaks about that after the resurrection, there's going to be a heavenly body. Well, that's, what, that's what I see it will be it described as. It will be okay. a heavenly body, um, but it will have a physical element to it. Yeah, I see also that the, the, um, our body now is for the old age, and we wouldn't need it in the new age. This is why it says that a uh, uh, corruption will put on incorruption. Yeah, I certainly it certainly won't have the same characteristics because we know that we won't need to feed it. We mm -hmm. won't it won't have that same physical a attributes. Um, but I still don't see we're just floating spirits, um, blue light beings in a in a in a physical looking world. No, I agree. Yeah. It's not all, it is a body, it's a body. I... It's a, but it's this completely spiritual body that won't have any imperfection in it. So it, uh, and I'm, I'm not even sure it'll have any functioning like bowels or maybe not even no lungs. It, 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 it yeah. probably will look exceptionally different, but still, Familiar. I don't think it will have any blood or any need for things like that. Uh, no. Yeah. But um, I conceive of it as the new body, the glorification body, is the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, we've often seen it has a morphing shape. So mm -hmm. it does have some shape, but it can morph. So... I think if you can get your head around that, that it can look physical without it being physical, as opposed to just a lot of gas particles floating around in the air. That's how I've, when I've engaged New Earth, that's how I've always seen it. There's been 
form and shape, but then it can suddenly change at the drop of a hat and become something else. And that's why I keep seeing this splitting open. I, I split open and I, I suddenly become these stars or gold dust or... Uh, so it's that kind of, yeah, sort of aspect to it as opposed to just a sort of a, a gas. Yeah, and I would think, well, and that's one of the big hairy deals about why these bodies are so valuable or sought after, I should say, is because they're like gods and because they can interact with, and you know, they, they have expression, they can interact with, you know, other, uh, other things unlike um, um, well, I shouldn't say online, but I mean, you know, just, you know, how, um, you know, how Satan has been trying to, well, I shouldn't, I don't know, I don't know if I should go there, but, um, you know, the stories about, <laughs> I don't even know if that's true, I don't know if I can say that either. But, you, uh, well, I'll say this, you know, we had this conversation with, this discussion with Joseph Sturgeon about how the goal is to not die. I mean, in terms of these bodies and, you know, to live and more, uh, you know, immortally <laughs> and overcome death. And that's one reason why these bodies are sought after by the fallen angels to try to learn how to do that or gain the tech. Uh, I don't know if I want to say technology or whatever of these bodies that are like gods. Yes, because I, I, I see some correlation between what the, the heavenly body will look like and what the physical body looks like right now. So I don't see like it will all just be abandoned. Yeah. Be some there's some correlation and some reference to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think why it is, it is it is of of worth and it matters and yeah, it has value. It has it has a high value, evidently. Yeah, yeah. And we're still coming into the understanding of why it does and why these bodies are so sought after. And why these, why there's such, there's been such a conspiracy to kill them or, or you know, destroying them. Well, the, the occult, the occult uses uh, the human body to bring about a manipulations that they do for their own purposes and their own reasons. Um, there seems to be powers uh, within our bodies that operate in this dimensional platform that they are more aware of than we are. Yeah. And I'm, you know, this thing about the first resurrection, second resurrection is still really gripping my spirit. I know we've got to get to the bottom of this. And I just had a slight, insight that might be the case um i just want to submit it that why this is what why the body matters so much now because if could it be there's a timeline that if we if we choose immortality and then we even choose to disappear in eden we with an immortal body we can on this current earth timeline we can have a significant impact right there and there but if we choose death whether there's a period of gap where we can't function according to what the earth timeline is and to do with the first resurrection and second resurrection the answer to that question is that there used to be and there is no longer because now since the men in white linen have had their bodies restored Anybody that dies now immediately comes into a state where they can choose to come back in the body immediately. 
you're not out of the picture if you die now. Are we saying then we're past the first resurrection? I think so, because I think the first resurrection happened, which resurrected us up into sonship. And at the point that we entered into everlasting city, at that point, we're talking about having been resurrected. The first resurrection is over at this point. Because the everlasting city is everlasting life. And I can't see everlasting life happening without a resurrection. And I saw this just the other day. Someone that chooses to die now is not out of the game. Actually, someone that dies now and has no knowledge of the game immediately is given knowledge of the game and gets into it right away for the wow. first time. Wow. Bill, what comes to mind when you were saying this is, um, you know, uh, um, Billy Graham's son, one of his sons, when uh, he was asked to give a testimony of his father at the um, his last um, his last what do you call it the, when they were preparing him for burial, what he said was that his father always says that one day coming you will hear that Billy Graham is dead, but don't don't take it serious because I haven't died. I have just changed addresses. Yeah, I'm living more than I ever lived. Yeah. See, it's, it used to be that if we were taken out and died, we, we lost ground. But now we've gotten to the place where it's actually win-win. If you die at this point, you win because you immediately get into the game at a higher age level than where you were to begin with. And if you don't die now, it's because you had enough higher age knowledge to know of that and you're winning. So... God's people are win-win right now. Nobody's losing. Death is having no victory over anybody right now, which is interesting because in that case, the sting of death is gone, which is resurrection. Mm. Oh, so you're just saying it's because we've entered a new spiritual age yeah. that's available. Yes. Yes. Remember, we just, we just emptied Eden, right? Of all the men in white linen that wanted to come, gave, they got a new body, they got resurrected, and they got back into the uh, big picture immediately. So somebody that dies with no knowledge of the big picture, they immediately are given the knowledge of the big picture, which is, here's your body, get to work. So has the thousand years begun? <laughs> I'm not sure there is a thousand years in the sense of uh, chronological time. I'm also being reminded, um, Bill, you said about um, the moon, etc., being signs. And I don't know why. Um, I was being reminded of the, the recent sign we had with the blood moon, yeah. etc., and what sign that really was saying to us was it to do with the resurrection? Well, and Billy Graham would have been, his death would have been after we emptied Eden out, right, Jane? Oh, I can't, I can't remember. Eden out as in when um, we opened mm. up and they came out and the animals came out and all no, those I'm, I'm misspeaking myself. And this, after the point at which we let the men in white linen um, get their bodies again and, and yes it was that, after he died that, after yeah that must have been the point of the point of the first resurrection because having their bodies restored to them is resurrection that was the first the first resurrection had happened or we couldn't have done that nobody gets their body back without a resurrection and so Billy Graham would have been a sign of this new time when there is no longer any sting of death because you immediately get your body back as soon as you die, if you die at all. If you choose. I if still you see choose, yeah. Stay in this sort of Eden environment at the moment. Yeah. My so what? Sorry. Go ahead. What's the difference between those getting their bodies now 
and those who came out of the graves with Jesus did. I was thinking the exact same thing. And was walking yeah. along. And I mean, they record 500, but that's only what we know in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We don't know how many more there were on the, on the planet. Yeah. That could have been first resurrection there too, huh? That's what I was thinking. That was the first resurrection. And that so I think there's been a lot, lot more than we know of. But uh, Revelation was written after that point. Revelation's still speaking of a first resurrection that's in the future, I think. I have to read this text over again. That's my take on it. Yeah, my thought had always been that those people that got their bodies back at that point still had to die again. Mm. Yeah. Like yeah. Lazarus. Lazarus died again, you know? Yeah, otherwise they would have been all hanging around all this time living somewhere hidden up for the last 2,000 years. Unless they ascended. Uh... Or they did the Enoch thing, yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Where did they go? I think that the first resurrections happened or we couldn't have... They, those men in white linen could not have gotten their bodies back if the first resurrection had not happened already. And I think it happened very recently. I think it happened when we entered into uh, City Everlasting. Yeah, so again, I'm going back to the question. Um... And like Lee just said, um, what, I'm asking something similar. So when Jesus died and he rose again, and those that um, were dead, Ray, um, you know, rose up and they start walking around. And the men, and the difference between them and the men in white linen that don't that that will wait for us to be gates so that they can receive their body. Uh, uh, I'm just wondering what is the distinction. No, that's interesting. That is a key to the whole problem, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's. I think that's the que that's one of the questions on the table that we're seeking. Because you have to make all the resurrection data that you have all work into one big picture, or you haven't got the big picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Did the Jesus fit. say, "Don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended"? Yep. So those others would have been in the same predicament, if you want to call it that. Yeah, until he ascended. You're right. So they needed. They had to. They needed to ascend. I think the people that rose from the dead when Jesus did were the ones most, most. Uh, what's the most righteous? Let's say, let's say, a the elect, um, the prophets the ones that serve the Father. And when Jesus' body, when he rose, they could not stay in the ground. They couldn't stay there because they were so close to him, so close to Father. You're right, so, Thomas. Hmm? It doesn't indicate that he emptied every grave in all of, all of Jerusalem or there would have been a really big uh, historical event. Well, why would he? There was only uh, a small handful of people that served Father at that time and over those years. There were some healings, too. Is that uh... so the, the, way, the way I see it is when Jesus rose, the, you, would, you would probably raise people like um, Rebecca, and uh, Leah, and uh, people of that caliber. Let's let me use that word. People of that caliber. David. David, exactly. David. Um. So the majority it would have zero impact on the majority because they were, they were someplace else. Well, we could sum that up with Thomas is saying that. Those were the ones that knew, recognized, and had faith that he was the Savior. 
Yes. Yeah, can we say that? I, that's That would be my take, yeah. They knew the Messiah from way back. This was who they were waiting for, looking for. The scripture that keeps coming to mind as you all, you all are talking is when Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave. So I'm wondering if he just called them by name, those ones that were um, risen also um, actually called them by name in some form or fashion, you know, frequency or whatever, um, mm. quantumly. Quantumly. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the scripture that keeps coming to mind is um, when he called Lazarus out of the grave. Yeah, he called them to life. Mm -hmm. Personally. Yeah. He, yeah, because if he just would have said, come forth, you know, everybody would have been risen. And this is probably why the theology texts, not that there's any but they, they use the term general resurrection as opposed, as opposed to maybe a specific resurrection, an individual resurrection. So what we're talking about is a the one there at Jerusalem at Jesus' resurrection is not a general resurrection. Right. Across the board. It's not across the board, everybody. Yeah, they're basically his sheep. And, and it was more of a sign than anything else. Yeah. What body did he have when he was resurrected? His transfiguration body, his glorified body. So why could they not touch him? Because he had to go visit Father first. Didn't he also have to put, was that the time that he had to put the blood on the mercy seat or had he already done that? He already did that at the cross. Oh, okay. But I think the point is he hadn't actually returned to Father yet. Yes, correct. He was still being resurrected onto the earth um, until of his ascension. Then he actually returned back to heaven at the time of his ascension. But remember, Mary did not even recognize him. Yeah. And we, he appeared to Thomas and the disciples at that point, he had already been up, came back, and he could eat, and they could touch him. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm, tr I'm trying to get my, the question around. Why? What was the difference? Why? Because he was the first fruit, the pattern, the pathway for us. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look at the Feast of Tabernacles, it's a seven-day process, but on the eighth day is the presentation of the priests to father. So the process has to follow through. He has to present himself as the high priest to father. Yeah, there was timing having to do with feasts that was why he didn't ascend back until he did. Um, but the other thing that came to mind is we can call that resurrection of Jesus and those few that were resurrect, resurrected at that time, we can call that the first fruits resurrection because Jesus is the first fruits, it was the first fruits resurrection at that time. Just a small number of people. And I think he was waiting for um, timing having to do with a couple of days from Pentecost before he uh, ascended back. There was a 40-day waiting period there before he ascended back that he had to go through. Yeah, he was here for 40 days and then ascended and told them to go to the upper room and wait. And I think they were there for about 10 days. Yeah, 10 days, and then Pentecost would have happened. Mm -hmm. It was 50 days from um, Passover to yeah. Pentecost. Mm. So there was 40 days, like 40 days with um, Noah and the Ark. Yeah, and 40 days of Jesus in the desert. It was the apostles' 40 days in the desert that he spent time with them. It was their time of testing by the, before, the, uh, before Pentecost. But anyways, that's the first fruits resurrection, that specific resurrection at that time. And Donna, it comes to mind... Um, 
the reason he said don't touch me is because we know she was going to probably wash his feet I mean she would have been there with her hair on his feet and crying you know yeah so back to where we are now what is the next question or what can we summarize from being here now with the men in white linen is it about wanting to know about our resurrected bodies I think we've answered all of our questions other than what's the nature of the resurrected body and we don't have the details on that yet I see we've, we've got to get some agreement between all of us as to what was said. I kind of lost, oh, lost I'm sorry. the picture halfway through. Okay. Um, and I don't know if others are in agreement. Um, is there one key thing, Bill, you could summarize and say, and then we could ask everyone, are we in agreement with that? Well, I'm saying the key thing for me was that the men in white linen recently that had their bodies restored, that was because it was the first resurrection at that point. And I'm also seeing that another key was that we've come to a, um, we've had some revelation, I believe, that the old earth gets left behind and we're actually moving into the new earth and the new earth is our inheritance, not the old earth. Uh, so the meek shall inherit the earth. When Jesus said that, he was thinking new earth when he said that. Our inheritance is in the new earth. It's not in the old earth. And the old earth is going to grow old like a garment. And we discussed from that verse in 51, uh, Isaiah 51, 6, that those that remain upon the earth are going to die out. And... Uh, we are going to leave it because our attention and our heart is not on the old any longer. It's on the new earth. And so we're not trying to bring the old earth into the new earth or bring the manifestation in the new earth. I'm sorry. We're not trying to bring the new earth into the old earth and fix the old earth. We are leaving the old earth behind and our inheritance is in the new earth. Mm. And we saw the parallel that we're not fixing the old mountain, so we're not fixing the old earth. Hmm. It's all about the new earth now. Yeah, I got the sense that oh, we're all agreed on that, are we? That last point. I think that's the key thing out of the whole discussion, actually. The last point? Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm that, in agreement. That's all about the new earth? Yeah. New earth, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah, the old earth's going to grow up like a scroll. And our, we're, uh, our inheritance is in the new earth. So we're you know, all agreed on that point. What about that first point? We're all men in white linen, bodies restored. They were given the option, right? Stump stayed behind in Eden, but then he came into the new earth at that point. And that's the other thing. They went to new earth at that point. Remember that encounter? Mm. They left and went to New Earth with their new bodies. Yes, yes. I remember. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's your confirmation on New Earth right there. Yes. Um, I see the timing of the men in white linen, linen, linen getting their new bodies as... Uh, the timing for them, I don't see that we have got our new bodies yet. No, I agree. No, we haven't. Okay. Yeah. We haven't. But I, that, that means, Thomas, that that part of the First Corinthians 15, the moment in the twinkling of an eye, is still ahead for us. Uh -huh. okay. Where it says, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. We've had the revelation of the truth that we shall be changed, but we have not lived it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. And that will come because as soon as you get the revelation of the truth, that's like entering New Jerusalem. I am truth. The next city up is I am life. So, you know, the next stage in this journey is the stage of having seen the truth 
uh, now we move into that truth and it becomes reality. That's the point at which the change comes. I don't think that change has to be that far away. Yeah. Okay. I think any one of us that has, has that additional, oh, here, here it is. Um, when the light goes on, the revelation comes of the truth that we are going to have a change. Um, that is a begetting, and we are just now waiting for the birth to happen. Mm. When the birth of that seed of truth that's been sown into our spirits happens, at that point, we can change at any point we want to. Wow. Mm. But you know, uh, uh, Paul said in Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, that for we know that when this earthly body which we live in now is taken down. That is when we die and leave this early body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself. So, so Paul, Paul had the, the assurance that the moment he dies, he will have a new body. And you are saying that, Bill, you are saying that we can even have it here when we step into the revelation? Yeah, I think that the uh, moment Twinkler and I, that, that birth is going to happen and the truth of uh, the truth of this new body happening is going to happen and that the change, the resurrection will happen at that point and will be changed. Mm. It's going to be like popcorn going off. Hallelujah. You know, there's one, there's another one. Pop, pop, and then all of a sudden, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Always wanted to be a colonel. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just wondering now about this window or big doorway that's before us um, by before. Is this the window, the doorway in? Okay, enter? well, here's the next thing is um, the four heavenly cities that we know about. The fourth one is the city of light on the new earth. And the Hebrew number four comes from the Hebrew letter Dalit, which means door. Mm -hmm. And so the door is open once uh, the fullness of that city of light has, once we've fully been united with that uh, Jesus as the city of light there. No, the, the, okay, the, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, the four men, again, are Enoch, Daniel, Noah, and who is the fourth one? Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc. <laughs> now, one thing that's coming to me, I don't know about Joan of Arc, but she probably did, is that one similarity or a, a thread amongst all of these, these, these three I know of is that they all traveled into the future. And they, I mean, they all saw what God wanted. Or yeah. they saw the future. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so is this door an invitation to go into the future and see what should be so we can operate out of it now. And even Daniel was the one who saw the revelation and sealed it. And now I believe this is the season God has unveiled those revelations. That's right. No more yeah. mysteries. Mm -hmm. Daniel saw into the future. We know Enoch was traveling big time. Um, who else was it? And Noah was doing Noah. something on that boat for all those months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was probably in heavenly places. Noah, Noah received a, a, a blueprint. Yes. And then built by it specifically. Yeah. He was told, wait, yeah, hey. well, it depends on which way you read, but a long time before the flood even came, he knew what was yeah. And I'm sure he saw in the spirit too. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I don't know too much about Jonah Ark. Well, some some stories say that uh, some some wrong word for story, but 
some uh, say that Noah actually uh, went to another dimension to during that time. Right. I know that Jonah, uh, Joan of Arc was an extreme visionary. And she, I know Joan of Arc. Um, she actually had a visitation from Michael, and she um, gave some prophetic words about um, the victories, like in Orleans and things like that. So she had some um, encounters. Hmm. I have found Joan of Arc in ascensions I've done with others. Turns up when it's a massive, massive blue picture, and there's a massive um, movement about to happen. Mm. Yeah, well, the majority of her scroll I've seen it is linked with the word army. It's yeah. about leading yeah. an army of people through. So whenever there's a question around that, mm. okay. You know, one thing great about her, too, she never drew a weapon. She always carried a flag. Her, she, yeah. she carried her um, coat of arms, which was um, a sword with a crown on it and two floor de leaves on either side. But she never, um, she never killed anyone. She never drew a weapon. So wow. it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Mm. Wow. It, can we, here's a question. Is, I'm wondering, uh, is there... Something common uh, with all four of these people. That, that's what I was just Good asking. Question. Yeah. And I think it doesn't even have to be something common among them all. It can link to the other. Yeah, it mm -hmm. links them together. Link, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, like uh, Daniel saw the revelations and it was sealed. But Enoch was the one who stepped into that revelation and went to heaven. And, and Noah also saw it and then had a blueprint as to how to handle it. Um, I mean, do you think this window is really the, the, the gate through to Eden? And all these four actually realized that. And that's what they had in common. And that's, could that be what we're being shown today? I'm thinking along the lines, then, that this window is really to new age. Well, in the end, we've seen Eden and New Earth all become one, so it probably doesn't matter how and, we describe then, it. I think it's just uh, the perfect uh, blueprint, isn't it? I think that's... They that are there and then maybe inviting us to come in with them and see for ourselves. Instead of dialoguing around it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Because I wouldn't describe it, I wouldn't use the word future, because in a sense the future hasn't been created yet. I see this as the perfect, I would call it the perfect blueprint. Okay. Okay. Um, and and we, we create the future. Yeah, because we create the future for the Earth timeline to bring it back into mm -hmm. the alignment with the perfect blueprint. Because it's not as if the earth has got this one future that, you know, we can just access. The, I see that it's got multiple futures. So, but the perfect blueprint is, is only has one line of story. So can we ask them, hey, you are welcome here. Why are you here? What do you have for us today? Yeah. I mean, we have, if it's going into this Eden, we have it, done that before. Um, yeah. That's not new. So maybe there is something newer here that we need to really ascertain. What was on Joan of Arc's uh, flag? What was on her flag? It was um, a sword with facing down with the crown on top, like where the handle is, and then um, two four de leaves on both sides. I think it was blue and white. Hmm. Do we know what the crown represented? Kingship. Uh, 
I'm not sure. I know it was, um, I think it was Henry the Seventh. I think it's, that's who it was that, or no, it was Charles the Seventh um, that actually, um, of course, gave her permission. She was only, I think, 17 when she first met with him, 19 when she was burned at the stake. Wow, she was young. Yes. Yeah, actually, in her, um, in the court, they were getting her for, you know, um, all the, the damage that she did against England. But in the court, because the church uh, at the time did not believe that you could be in grace. And um, so they asked her the question if she believes that she was in grace, in God's grace. And she answered the court and she said, if I am not in God's grace, may he put me there. But if I am in God's grace, may he keep me there. Mm. And it stumped the court. They, could, they couldn't say anything. Here's a 19-year-old saying this, you know. It was just she believed that God, well, she, she had visions, and God can, would give her um, plans and um, prophetic words that uh, this is what's going to happen, and they would happen. So, so some of the church in England said that she was of the devil, of course, but um, France, of course, uh, knew that she was sent from God. That's why they canonized her and made her into a saint. Well, I, I'm, I'm getting a bit of a leading here, what this window might be, because I think what we've done in the past is we've gone through this window to Eden or, we've, or we're in New Earth, but that's still in time. And I wonder if we're being asked to step into these things outside of time. I'm not sure I can quite get my head around what the difference is, but... It's something to do with the fact that, like, like we're in eternity, we're out of time. Um, when we're in some of these other places, we're we're in time, aren't we? Even though we're in heavenly realms, because it's only eternity, infinity, and new earth that are out of time. I don't know. I don't know whether there's a new earth in time and a new earth out of time. I'm confused on that. Um, Where is the ancient of days? Is that eternity? Yeah. Isn't Eden part of eternity? Yeah, well, that, we don't know the answer to that. I'm only asking because the first time that I met Joan of Arc, she gave us a key that opened up an ancient gate and we went down that gate and that's where I first met Enoch and got the blueprints which was all to do with um, Metatron's cube etc and that was where Uh, we were on Wisdom's Heights where we met her oh. and opened up this ancient gate. Oh, which could be everlasting, which is an eternity. Yeah, but we don't actually know if we go, oh, if we go through that portal above everlasting where that goes. Because I just saw that and ultimately completed the full circle. And I can remember on the Wednesday Ascension in New Earth, um, someone saw the portals. When we were on New Earth as well. Linking everything up. <sighs> 
Oh yes, so this would make sense if this if this was the window above ever the realm of everlasting in eternity. This would make sense why it's an out of time dimension. I think this could be the where the window is. But if we engage the window, we mm. might get more information. Yeah, yeah. Mm, just... Yeah, shall we all just step through and say, on the basis that, that that's... Well, no, yeah, we, no, yeah, let's not conclude that that's the place, but yeah, just step through and see. Do we get any sense that this is the one in eternity above everlasting? That's out of time, because... I'm sure you can go into Eden and New Earth and still be in the timeline um, dimension. You're not in the perfect ultimate blueprint. You're in the timeline that's linked with where everyone's at currently. Just wondering, are we all stepping through? Feel to stop and just ask. I'm seeing that picture you had the other week uh, um, from Field of Dreams, the man by the cornfield, just hesitantly putting his arm through, wondering whether to go through it. I'm picking that up, so I'm just... Just wanting to ask the question. These four have turned up today, it's created a window doorway with an invitation to ask, to seek, to find what's beyond. I think um, part of the question really comes down to um, have we answered today's question and identified the question for the next time? Or is this uh, a mandate for today also?
I think this is showing us the two elements of that we have to keep in our heads of the parallel timelines. And if we think singularly, we get we'll get confused and we'll get on this sort of um, simplified version. I've saw that a couple of times tonight, Jane. Mm -hmm. the, the parallel existences, um, the parallel instances. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because I wouldn't call it universes anymore now. I think because it, we're not saying that, that, that there was two Earths created and, uh, and are on these different destinies. I'm calling it now parallel timelines that run side by side of the one earth and the, and the, and the final blueprint. And I, I, I can see through this window, it links to the new earth in the new earth in the, the perfect blueprint new earth. The big picture new earth, right? Yeah, the sort of corporate blueprint as opposed to the new earth we can engage on our timeline and our journey of where we're at currently that's not fully perfected yet. But personally as forerunners as opposed to the corporate ecclesia. Yeah, and the corporate timeline is the final destiny of what happens to everyone. Yep. Could almost do with a word for that. The, uh, whether we just call it the corporate new earth versus the the, the, the final new earth. Maybe we call it the final new earth. Uh, I think the actually this it's the um, the difference is the timeline and not the earth. It's uh, because the corporate ecclesia is not as far along it right now as forerunners are, but in, but yet the big picture is that the corporate ecclesia is going yeah. to going to into this fully, all of us into that perfect big blueprint. Actually, work. yeah, there's actually three, isn't there? There's the final blueprint, the where the corporate ecclesia is, and then the individual. Yeah, because as, as uh, forerunners, we can we can we can run ahead of the of where the uh, corporate ecclesia is. Yes, we do that thing that Jesus did in, in uh, Hebrews, where he went beyond the veil and act as an anchor um, to draw the rest of us into where he already was. And as forerunners, we can go into the new earth. And what we're doing governmentally draws the rest of the ecclesia in. So is there agreement then? Would you say, can you see three timelines? I think this is really helpful if we can see it like this and then we... Can you summarize it again, Jane? So I would say the, there's the perfect fullest blueprint of everything completed when everything's that's one timeline the the five call that the final new earth then there's the timeline where the corporate ecclesia is currently at which is the combination of everyone's decisions choices to date in history that has led us to this point um, then there's, there's that timeline and then there's the timeline individually what you, where you can go and do that without the restriction of what the corporate is choosing to do or not. Which we, could, we could call that the forerunner timeline. Yes. Yeah, so when we call it the final, the corporate ecclesia timeline and the individual, the forerunner's timeline. My, my question is the um, 
the new earth timeline. It doesn't have to be timeline. It has to be maybe lifeline because it, it doesn't deal with time. Yes, you're right. Actually, it's not a right word, is it? Um, maybe lifeline. It, you know, it is, uh, it's a timeline well, until we get to the place that there is no time, though. Yeah, there's two, the two, there's two that are in time. The, yes. the corporate ecclesia and the individual. Uh, but the final blueprint one isn't in time, so it actually needs another word. Um, Bill? Well, it just is, isn't it, really? It's not, it's not as if there was a, any journey of it. it. It just is. It's always yes. been the final uh -huh. picture. Yeah. Like it can now, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not the the now. Timeline. It's, uh, it's the... It's the well, it's, isn't it really just the, the was... The original was the... It gets a bit confusing because there was the original plan that God came up with, then it got distorted, and now we've got the new plan, which we're not going back to the original. Mm -hmm. we're, we're now on this new was, and <laughs> which includes yeah. us wrapped into this destiny. Would eternal be the right word for the perfect one then? Yeah, yeah I mean, eternal. Everlasting. I see Donna's hand up, by the way. Well, on the chat, Erin said she um, has a question, but she can't seem to unmute. She's on the phone. And she yes, has a question. Okay. And I was just putting on the chat that I was just on the phone until I got home and I'm on my laptop. But so, Erin, if you can hear me, um, you should be able to unmute it on your phone because as I was driving, I was able to unmute on my phone. It's not through the Zoom, it's actually on your phone. It's easier for me to say that in, instead of typing it here like I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I did it when I was just driving until I got home and got on my laptop. Hopefully that helps. You know, this reminds me of um, something that I ran across when we were engaging um, Infinity and um, there was a, uh, to make a long story short, there's a symbol that represents the overlap of, um, I think it's three infinity symbols, and they call it uh, perfection. And, um, and I stumbled across that somehow, but, um, so um, the reason why I'm saying that is that it looks like it, it seems it's coming through perhaps that this overlap between these three uh, may be an expression or representation of perfection. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do you all hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm just dwelling on it. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> a bit deep. A bit deep. Yes, yes. <laughs> do, do you remember when we were talking about that patient? Yeah, I do. I do. And um, so it seems like so when um, she was describing that, it reminded me of that. Mm -hmm. And so is... Some um, perhaps there's some interconnection, in that there's literally like an overlap of these, in terms of what we were talking about the parallelness, um, in them all existing at once, but also um, perhaps overlapping. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, this. I mean, there's definitely. Um... I'd use the word a convergence. Yes. Yeah, the the sort of individual, but mm -hmm. but the, the the desire for the ultimate convergence of them coming together of yes. them. Yes. 
But when you are describing it, what I'm seeing is the Metatron's cube. That could be. I can mm. see that. Like it, it comes together in it. You know all. The oh yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 So it's not overlapping. It's just sort of multi-dimensional. Yes. Mm. And I, I'm even seeing mm. the um, uh, um, the revolving uh, doors we saw at the time. The revolving gates. Mm. Just like that. Three revolving, but it ends up in one. Oh. Yes, yes. Because I do sense there's some... Um, because there's this overlap or parallel, if you will, that there's some relation in going in and out of them. Yes. Traversing them or if you will. Yes. Yes. I have a, I have a question here. Mm -hmm. You know how we're bringing everything under the headship of Jesus and into the perfect oneness of the bench of one? Uh -huh. yes. Is there a certain sense in which there's another place that we're bringing, um, we're bringing all of the ecclesia into the oneness and new earth too? Is this a separate oneness from the oneness of the bench of one, or is it the oh, same, yes. same one? Yeah. No, yeah. because the bench of one is the corporate ecclesia timeline. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah, whereas this other, I've just come up with two, two words have come to me, either the new tapestry blueprint or the joint headship blueprint. I like the, new, the joint headship. Yeah. Because this is, it's not the first thing that was ever created. This is the revised perfection blueprint that is now happening because of our part in the destiny of the earth. Hmm, that's deep. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just ask, um, the um, person on the phone, do they still have their hand up? Are they wanting to ask or add something? Or is that... It was Aaron, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, and actually, she just um, posted it on the chat. Wait a minute, let me see what she says. So Aaron says, my question maybe someone can ask is, whatever the new Jerusalem is made of or the dimension it is in, wouldn't it be that the new earth would be in the same dimension to be able to house the new Jerusalem coming down? Ask that question one more time, please. Like, yeah. Okay. So she says, my question, maybe someone can ask is, okay, here's the question. Whatever the new Jerusalem is made of or the, the dimension it is in, wouldn't it be that the new earth would be in the same dimension to be able to house the new Jerusalem coming down? The answer is yes. Um, because New Jerusalem or the heavenly cities, all of them combined anyway, um, are part of New Earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the same dimension it has to be. Yes. And so her point is, New Jerusalem is actually related to New Earth. And I think that's because these 12 heavenly cities are actually one. It's all one. It's oneness. In the end, yes. Yeah, like, like, like three and one. Or in this case, it's 12 and one. And I think that they're 12 and one all on the new earth. There's no place else for them to go. Mm -hmm. So she's absolutely correct. So, so it's like one new earth, but 12 cities. Yeah, 12 aspects of one city, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, one city, okay. It's the mystery of Jerusalem. It's, it's all about Jerusalem, and this is 12 aspects of Jerusalem. And it's actually 12 aspects of Jesus' um, governmental, as, as Christ, his governmental um, function. Mm. But she's absolutely correct, yes. That was perceptive. 
So that was back a very to, precise question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, um, let me, like, can I submit this really quick? Um, going back to the overlap or parallel infinities, um, there, they get the um, the jewelry that I came. I mean, the jewelry image that I came across is called um, double infinity or infinity times infinity, and it represents equal equilibrium, balance, limitlessness, or absolute perfection. And um, so, these um these parallels that we're looking at. Well, I just wanted to put that out there. And uh, I just wanted to mention that. Mm. This relationship between these, these two, these parallel existences and maybe even their overlap. Um, and our and then our ability to to traver, traverse them and them coexisting could they represent um absolute perfection Well, I see absolute perfection is uh, um, what you described, Bill, I thought was so good. Twelve cities combined. You could almost call that, that's the final. Yeah, it is. Twelve mm -hmm. cities combined, um, which sort of linked with the twelve, which is sort of the same as the joint headship. Yeah. But it expresses it in more detail of what we're aiming for. Yeah, we get to the 12th, we enter the 12th city and come into union with Jesus with that 12th aspect of his governmental, of his Christ-likeness, of, of his kingship. Mm. Then we are complete in his kingship. Yes. And at that point, we're, we're, we're Christ's little c. Which yeah. you know, sounds heretical, but Christ means king, right? Or Messiah. We're Messiahs. Yeah. Little C's, little M's in that case. The reason, the reason we're grasping at this and not able to get the full picture is because we've got four twelfths of the picture right now. Yeah. And we don't have all the data to work yeah. with to see the big picture yet. Uh -huh. Yeah. This has been so good because I see this has just brought us with so much material. We can formulate pages which then yeah. help people see the bigger picture and, and eventually can transition once they get all these elements in place and start stop thinking one dimensionally um, along, along one timeline. One more thing, Jane. I, I believe because we saw on the 2018 milepost that this year, the milepost of the, the revelation of the mystery of Jerusalem was on the milepost for this year. I believe this acceleration, we're going to be through these 12 cities by the end of the year. This is not a long process. Me too. The, the long think. process was preparation to enter New Jerusalem. It was yeah. all that suffering that was needed to get us to yeah. be childlike. Uh, yeah. But this is not going to take long. Mm -hmm. and the second thing I want to say became clear to me, Joan of Arc is present because she is... Uh, a standard bearer for victory. And I believe that she will be the one that leads the charge to overcome the last enemy of death. That's why she's, that's why she's present. Oh, oh. wow. Oh, that's even huge. <gasps> and, and Enoch already overcame death. Enoch already did that, you know? Well, he did really, didn't he? He pioneered that, and it's as if yeah. Joan is now her scroll is to bring the army of the Latter Day Saints kind of in into in, it in, into this destiny. Yeah, yeah. she rallies the entire army. Um, it, they it said where I looked up in the 
in Google that uh, when she, 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 she would ride into the midst of the enemy with her standard so that her whole army could see her and they would all gather her around her and, and rally and then they would be able to win the battle when they had previously been losing. Wow. And so that's what she's going to do with this last enemy of death for the entire ecclesia. She'll rally us all into it. So, so today she was given as a strategies, right? Yeah, we had big picture uh, revelation today and revelation of strategy. Hmm. Noah, Enoch, and Daniel each uh, showed a way of escape, a way of getting out of where they were. Somebody told me today, and it was probably you, Simone, that in history, man, maybe it was Eric, um, God has always had someone prepared when the, the, the mass of humanity was about to, to lose the whole thing. He always had someone to bring in to recover things, and Enoch was the first of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think Noah was one of those, and I, I'm seeing where uh, Joan will be the last one of those, and not yet sure where Noah fit, uh, where um, Daniel fits into that. Other than that, he had the mysteries, a revelation of mysteries. Well, he showed the end of the empires. He showed the end from the begin, uh, the end. Yeah, <laughs> when, when he showed when the Israel, end. When Israel failed. In their, in, in their righteousness, then the beast kingdoms came in, in, se in sequence. And the last is the Roman Empire in the form of um, religion today, still ruling the world. And the escape is, we're being shown an escape, and the escape that Daniel is showing us is the stone kingdom. Yeah, it's the kingdom of God. The kingdom, that's it. Yeah, and the last part of the book of Daniel, chapter 12, um, is, I think, the point at which the resurrection of the dead gets mentioned also. Mm, that's good. He's told, he's told to seal up the books until the time of the end comes. He's told about how uh, many will shine as stars, the wise will shine as stars, and he's told about his inheritance that he will rise to his inheritance. Uh, so it's speaking of the time of us uh, inheriting, and that's um, New Jerusalem is, is enter the kingdom, Zion is inherit the kingdom, and everlasting is possess the kingdom. And uh, possess the kingdom uh, comes after resurrection after the first resurrection. So we're actually, well, we've already gotten to the place of possessing the kingdom. That's Daniel chapter 7. You'll find that in there. All these everlasting things, uh, city everlasting. It can't be city everlasting without there having been a resurrection. So, again, we're back to that. Wow. Yeah, we're, been, we're, we're preparing a Noah's Ark, so to speak. Oh, what do you mean by that, Simone? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think that came out of my spirit. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. I just felt a real like, wow, that's that's big. Well, the new earth is the ultimate escape from the problem of old earth. And the from yeah. death. Is the Noah's Ark? It's the oh. Noah's Ark. Yes. It's the new. Yes. What did you say, patience? <gasps> The, the new earth is the Noah's Ark. We are preparing. Ooh. You're right. Jack. Yeah. It's the blessed jackpot. Oh, wow. Blessed jackpot. No, <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's that. That's obvious. when Once you see it, it's obvious, isn't it? But before you before that, you yes. can't see it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. And I'm just seeing as well the thing around these 12 cities, it's 
I think we'll get to that revelation if we all set our hearts and hunger for that revelation of the 12 cities. It's dependent yeah. on, on our hunger for, for wanting those, that revelation. Mm. Not just going to come just because God's ordained it to come. Yes. Yeah. Well, that this could be year. the question for the next um, encounter. Mm. Mm. The yeah. revelation of the 12 cities. <clears throat> Yes, because it's important, because it represents the fullness of what we're going to possess. And I think that's why we have to see that they're important, um, because they give this extra dimension of, of what, what we're fully called to. Mm. And for those that have only experienced, say, one, like New Jerusalem, they don't see the depth of it. They only see an element. And that element is never meant to be just the limit. It's, we were always meant to embrace the full depth of the blueprint. Mm, mm. That's why we can't stop and take camp in any one city and say, well, that's enough. And, and, and what I'm seeing is um, I'm seeing all of us. We are together like a big crowd going into a tunnel, a dark tunnel. But in front of us, our foreheads, we have lights there. Like what the miners have when they are going down there. We have shining lights in front of us on our foreheads. And in our hands, we have something. I can't make out what it is. There's something that looks like a robe, an orb or a road in our hands. And we're marching towards the darkness. And it's becoming light as we march and go into it. Oh. Oh, that's good. Donna has a good uh, post there on the chat about Joan of Arc. Carriage Reformation. Mm. For those listening, um, it says, Joan of Arc said, I seek the king in his rightful throne. I was also told that she carries reformation. I've had her show up in my life about four times in the past four years and didn't know why until you all started talking about her tonight. Mm. Woohoo. Amen. She's just showing up to so many people at the moment. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah I see that. Thank you all. Thank you, Bill. She's gathering the army. Mm -hmm. I do love the military. Mm -hmm. You joined the right army there, Thomas. We are all in the army. In this army, we are all in it. We certainly are. <laughs> and I see the, the, the interpretation patience of what, what you saw with the lamp on your head and the orb, I see that's the extent to which we are brave enough to set our hearts on asking these big questions. The light will be revealed to us. Wow. And the extent the orb is the authority that we carry and it's dwelling, resting in that authority and saying that's, you know, we're worthy of asking these big questions and sort of not shrinking back and saying, oh, you know, that's too much for me. I'll, you know, I'll go to and ask a smaller question. It's, it's walking in that authority such that we will see the light. And I think today is a, a classic testimony of that. I mean, I was really, oh, I was like, what am I doing before this encounter? I was going, this is just, oh, I, I was... I thought, this is just too big a question. We'll never get there. We, mm. This is all, you know. And I felt really unrestful. Unrest, and now I feel so much has been revealed. It's been amazing and awesome counter. But we've just got to remember that confidence to keep asking those big questions because it seems to be that the answers are, are there to be accessed. Yes. It really is incredible, isn't it? It's not like you have to be some huge guru expert to to dwell on these. It's like 
the answers come if you just really group together and really want the final truth and are open to the final truth. Mm -hmm. Jane, um, this, this is a higher age uh, version of ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. Wow, that's my scripture for real. <laughs> nations. <laughs> Because oh, so we're asking of him and he's giving us new earth yeah. as our burdens. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love that. And also the I am's, you know, um, of our identity in the in the in the um, the bench one, you know, I am the yeah. Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. I am yeah. the beginning and the end. Yes. So framing that up, we yeah. get to see the, the, the beginning and the end blueprint. Yes, and I, I got revelation just a couple of hours before all this call about the fathers. I was dwelling on, you know, the becoming this bench of 12 and the fathers. And I was shown that we mustn't keep thinking of fathers as in, oh, someone who can lead a profound, you know, public ministry the fathers is is anyone who leads no no it's, it's, it's more than that it's um yeah. it's headship jane Not, it's what it's headship yes yes that's what i'm trying to say yes <laughs> that's it mm, mm. Wow. can you elaborate a bit more it's because oh, it's the distinction is so deep um it's 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 possessing all the kingdoms isn't it if if you possess the kingdoms and you you release them spiritually to others you don't even have to write a page or you know have a discussion with someone to lead them into something you're fathering by by forging the way and absorb uh, and taking possession of the kingdoms uh, which then opens a spiritual door that others can come through that is just as much fathering as anybody who's trying to explain you know the, the content and mm. so this is fathering tonight yeah yes and in fact fathering seems to almost encompass everything, everything. we're doing yeah, yeah. We can't say, oh, well, we're, we're doing fathering in this situation and we're doing an encounter in this situation and we're, we're doing a tree of life group in this situation. It, it, everything seems to come under that umbrella because it's the destiny of all uh, and all the new, um, what are we calling them now? What it is you're imparting life is what it is. <laughs> yeah well it's like because we're in a new spiritual age everyone now has a much higher destiny mm -hmm. they're seeing they have a much higher destiny than they ever realized yes this is for everyone it's not for you know a few are fathers and a few are not mm -hmm. this is actually on everyone's scroll if they open themselves up to it mm -hmm. but people can close it and say no I don't want it I don't want it and so they don't live it out but anyone who says, okay, I want that fullest blueprint, or however it's defined, will be a father. Amen. I am father. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, you know, I saw also that this week when I was engaging fathering, and that thing came to me very similar. Uh, 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 the, the, the father was comparing father to Alif, the beginning of the Hebrew letters the originator, the source. Yeah. Everything comes from father and everything will end in father. Hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's that huge. Yes, because if you actually think, right, the, the, the father aspect of the Trinity is defined by he's the father. So in that sense, we must become the father if we're in full union with the father we must become the father 
yes. as we are the sun and almost the Holy Spirit, I suppose the same applies. We become the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and this scripture, mm -hmm. this scripture came to me, but in a different form. He said, um, he said, be still and know I am father. Mm. Wow. In, in, your, in your quietness, he will let you know that you are a father. Be still and know I am father. Yeah, because that, back to what we were saying before, there'll be no barrenness. So it's, we can't, no one can say, oh, but I'm not going to multiply myself. Yes. That's not in my destiny. That, that, that's not the fullest blueprint. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that's why we're all called to be fathers. And to show Abraham he, he was a father, he took away barrenness. Hmm. Yeah. The same way, there can't be any barrenness in any of us. It's not even just barrenness as to having sons in the kingdom, but in everything. Yeah. At times you say you are blank in his, pre in his presence, nothing is coming. That is barrenness. No barrenness, even in that sense. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, yeah, the other word is fruitful. Yes. There's no lack of fruit. Oh, I just think the whole final blueprint is just so, so glorious compared to what we thought our destiny was when we first became Christians, isn't it? I mean, it's just, it's not a fraction of what we thought. I'm just so grateful. It's so much bigger than we ever were shown. Yes, absolutely. Oh, honor. I so honor you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yes, for Lord. The, for the immense expansiveness of what's in your hearts it's just so wonderful mm. so honoring so inclusive so family orientated it's just so beautiful we're just Lately. privileged and honored to be part of this today and just yeah, express too. my ultimate gratitude the full expression of his love. Yes. And, and Father, we continue to thank you for giving this opportunity to come as a body. That you can come and sit at your feet as a father and give us these four amazing fathers. Noah, yeah. Daniel, uh, Enoch, John of Ark, and um, who else? That's it. Four amazing fathers to teach us and to enable us to step in this door. Thank you for opening our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Thank you for binding us together with cords of love that cannot be broken. And thank you for removing barrenness in any form mm -hmm. from all of us, even in thinking, in thought, in encounters, in our relationships, in our families, in our going out and coming in. There will be immense faithfulness, immense fruitfulness in all we do because we have engaged and encountered the Father. Thank you for putting the scroll of the Father in us. The Father's scroll is in us. We will live as fathers. We will impart fathering to others. We will manifest fathering on earth as it is in heaven. That you will be glorified. We thank you. Oh, amen. Amen. Well, are we complete? We've been going a while. Um... <clears throat> I see that um, thing, Bill, you bought at the start could be a real uh, something else we need to engage in the, uh, well, not necessarily in this one, but any any uh, forum uh, about bringing the earth, that governmental act of bringing the earth timeline into the perfect, uh, what do we call it, perfect blueprint. Yeah, the was, was into the is to come to manifest in the now. Hmm. Yeah, and that, and that, and then they're exploring the twelve cities, the rest of the twelve cities. And, and we everyone... want to give Anna, Anna to um, Jane and Bill for sacrificing and going 
before all of us into the father and thing and everything else allowing god to use you impart into you to impart to us we honor honor you hugely you you, you might not see it but we do Oh, yes. Thank you. I want to impart one more thing to you right at this moment, though. You are all going to surpass me. I'm seeing it already starting, mm. and I'm rejoicing in it. Mm. Uh, where we used to be unique, Jane, in who we are and what we're doing, we are now becoming one of many. Yeah, yeah. That's equal, good, isn't it? I equal mean, peers. Let's see. Equal peers. And uh, these, our sons, are surpassing us. Mm. And Bill, when you said that, do you know what I heard? I hear uh, Jesus saying that the works I did will you do also, and even greater. He had the same heart. Well, it's wonderful because it, it passes the baton on and to someone else who's got energy because the same person keep doing stuff for years it gets very um, uh, tired and the, the new person brings that energy but the, uh, the others can join in so it's never like you miss out because you then still rejoicing in the, the revelation of the truth which brings such life Okay, now, Jane, Wonderful. we are honoring you right now as the original head and source of all that's going on here because you're the father of the entire house here. And as we do this to you, as we honor you, take that and trade it for your energy. And Amen. Yes. You will not be tired any longer, and you are going to move on to... Uh, there are many, many victories ahead. Yes. Oh, and we even standing around you as Aaron's and S to support you. Hold your hands. Yeah. <sighs> Raise up your arms. Yes. Amen. Amen. You are not alone. You are a father in the midst of their family with every, with all your grown sons uh, standing beside you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was actually reflecting yesterday that the journey now is flowing so much easier than it was in the early days. There was such clashing of swords in the early days and and sometimes it was like treading in mud and, and uh, even though there was an element that you I had no choice. I knew I, I just had to continue, but it was quite painful. It was quite painful because I knew the reality of the perfect blueprint and I knew this wasn't a fraction of what was, it was meant to be. But the flow now is so much more beautiful. And I actually see, I'd actually misunderstood the blueprint in the early days because I actually thought it was all the physical human beings alive now having to agree before the father could move people forward and i now see that was not right it was actually the it was bringing the 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 he heavens together and the un and getting the unity that was already exists in heaven um to just to release that that doesn't need the agreement of all the uh, people on the earth at this current time and so now I actually see so much more hope and flow than I saw in the early days um, and we're not going to be restricted by the response of our generation to yes do this which is which is I, nice. believe. I need yeah. to share one more thing here Jane um, honor your father and mothers that it may go well with you and that you may live long on the earth. So honor your father and mothers that it may go well with you that you may live long on the new earth. Honoring your father and mothers is actually the, um, 
it is the flow that results in immortality. Mm. And I do not say that in the old fathering way of, of immediately uh, passing the plate, you know. It's mm-hmm. not that at all. It's a flow of honor. And I saw this today that when we honor Jane, then she has something to trade that's been given to her for free. Nobody worked for it. She didn't have to work for it. Well, actually, she did, but um, honor when honors do as well also. But anyway, she has something we freely give to her that she can trade on the sea of glass. Yes. So we give her something that she can, it really is, when you honor her, you really do give her something that she can trade. And it really does benefit her when we honor her. But it also benefits us in that we are flowing towards immortality. And mm-hmm. this here is actually the fullest blueprint of giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, it's, it's the fullest blueprint of giving out of love. Uh, giving back in this sense. And it, it's, um, I, I'm not getting it fully, but you, you, you can unpack that and, and see the truth that's there in that, that scripture. In uh, 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 that commandment, the... Uh, I don't even like the word command, instruction. Here's, here's the way things work. This is how it works. And you reap what you sow. When, when you, when you um, honor Jane, then your children are going to honor you too. Mm-hmm. The flow just keeps on going. It's all positive and it's all uphill. And the, that's where the acceleration is coming. And the tipping point and all that we're looking for. Amen. Well, it is acceleration, isn't it? You know, um, here we are just into March. And I spoke with a friend last night who I hadn't spoken to in such a long time. She had no idea what I'd been up to these last few months. And I had the opportunity to share. It just came out of me. Shared with her, first of all, from the court of heavens, then went up and shared into the things that I'd been doing with you all she was amazed and in fact when I got off the phone I was amazed at how much has happened in such a short time I only joined I made contact I looked it up today I made contact with Jane first and that was on the 5th of September last year that's all it was wow just those, just a few months. I thought, no, that can't be right. It must have been the year before. <laughs> and I looked it up this morning. I was like, I had to go look it up. And I thought, I don't, I, that's just amazing. I can't believe that. The 5th of September. Wow. And I think that just shows you what the, the people, the new generations can cope with. Like we had such a big deal with some of the, the most funda- you know, simple concepts, um, such triggering and fighting and what's, you know, whether we let go of warfare or, you know, the fact we can even access heaven now, such a big deal for so many. And, and it seems to be like those that have got over all that rough patch can just take off like a rocket now. Really is wonderful. Well, the ones he's bringing us now are ones that are going to enter into New Jerusalem right away. Mm. Well, that's what I wanted to share. You know, for me, it's been six months in EF. Yes. So you I shared things with this friend last night who knew nothing of all of this, okay? I mean, you know, she's from the old wine skin, but she's come out of that for some time. But I shared some things, you know. And I was waiting for, you know, some kind of reaction. Everything I shared with her, she was like, oh, yes, I see that. Oh, yes, I've always known that. I'm, I, I have felt that since I was a little girl. You know, this was her response. 
So, you know, the flow that we release and we've been releasing all the way through and, you know, down onto as everlasting doors, onto the ecclesia, onto the church, etc. I just want to testify it really is working. Oh, it, it astounded me. I got off the phone and I was astounded at just how she just accepted it all. And you were fathering, Lee. Yeah. Yes. And Man. she, she I, I, in fact, I have fathered her, Bill. <laughs> yeah, um, even in the old wine skin. But um, I just couldn't believe just how easy okay. she just said, yeah, I see that. Yeah, oh, yes, I, I, I see that. That's really and well, I had a, I've got a similar testimony that happened um, a few days ago, but an even more acceleration. I, I went to this uh, guy I'd never met before for an appointment, podiatrist, and he just asked me what I did. And, and, I, and, I, and I, like, you know, I initially didn't give too much detail, and he kept prodding and prodding. And then when I thought it was a Christian thing, well, oh, what do you do? What do you do? Next minute, he, turns, he, he just turns it all round and he goes, um, oh, yes, I, I'm absolutely, um, I, I've been researching this kind of thing for a long, long time. And, and within minutes, we were in the most profound dialogue that we have, like, here on these calls. Wow. I mean... He moved in the professional environment. You know, fortunately, there was no one else around, and he, he didn't have another client after. So we were talking for like 20 minutes after the appointment of, of, of everything. And this guy had thought through, he had not investigated any Heavenly Realms materials. He had done this sort of of his own walk with bits mm -hmm. here. And he was, he was bringing all these questions up to me about this and that. And in the end, he said, oh, I'll definitely go and check your site out. Um, I mean, this, and I couldn't even work out if he was really a fully blown Christian. You know, I was sort of asking, does he have a strong walk? And it was kind of like, it was a bit vague. And, but it was as if the, the hunger, and he was a young guy as well, was so there that it, was, it had been driving him for years to investigate the biggest questions of mankind. And, and the fact that I just came across him and had this conversation, I mean, in Australia, it's absolutely the rarest thing to even talk about Christ in the slightest sense, let alone anything deep like this. It, 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 I was just gobsmacked. I was really gobsmacked. And I actually, I was been calling this guy in. Um, I really feel like if he, if he could just open himself up to this, he could be a huge part in this because he's so mature man spirit and the bride say come yes awesome. <laughs> i'd just say be expectant yes i think that's the thing isn't it it's it's the faith brings the results and i think any any memory of how it was in the early days we've just got to let go of and not say that's you know going to be the pattern just let go of that it was just a rough ride as we were going up into the atmosphere of the earth in our space rocket and it was a bit rocky and um but it, it, the, the smoothness is flowing oh do we need to turn the recording off i am doing that now <laughs>